If you go to IMDb and read the synopsis, it's extremely simple. So I'm going to read <laughs> this and you're going to laugh and be like, okay, well, we have to, we definitely have to expand on this. So, yeah. A modern day avatar of Vishnu, a Hindu god who is believed to have, have descended to Earth to protect the world from evil forces. That's actually not even a complete sentence. So, no. so there's an issue there. So let's expand on what this IMDb synopsis is trying to say. So another thing, we are going to get stuff wrong, guys. We're going to mispronounce names. We're going to forget names. We're not going to know sure. actors. We're going to mess up. But here's how I've understood it. And I, we kind of put out reaction videos. That was everybody's chance to correct us. Uh, so bear with us. But here's what I understand and what I've learned, okay? And you can correct me if I'm wrong. Historically, um, Indians believe that there are ages in their society. And we are currently living through the Kali age or Kali Yuga. Yuga is the word for age, okay? So ages also span like thousands of years. So mm -hmm. everyone who exists on Earth right now has only lived in Kali Yuga. But this movie that takes place in 2898 is a obviously fictitious bookend to this age. So it's it's definitely science fiction, but it's also rooted in a lot of their own beliefs. So I found that to be fascinating because I don't America doesn't have an equivalent for this. Like the no. uh, the American equivalent would be like put Mel Gibson's character in The Patriot into <laughs> into Alex Garland's Civil War. <laughs> like what is it? Um, America's too much of a new experiment or it, it just also doesn't really have much of a culture. So it's like it, it's just fascinating because the idea that there was like so much still to learn about what goes into these ideas. I mean, you and I definitely don't know, but um, that that's what I've come to understand. It is basically a historic, well, not historical. It's just science fiction, but it's rooted in a lot of their um, historical and religious beliefs and things like that. So I thought that was a really cool concept and it seems like everybody else did does as well so is that how you've understood it do you have anything to add to that yeah i guess the american equivalent would be like um in the bible the the antichrist coming and uh god coming back a uh, uh, much more uh, uh sad and not really exciting superhero-esque type of historical context to what we believe yeah. um and there's not really a timeline for that but for this they were able to take it, spin it, put a sci-fi spin on it, put a superhero spin on it. And even in the and I'm so glad, Ryan, and and, you know, people pointed it out. You did a video on it first. The the prelude to Kalki mm. and the expansion, learning about the worlds of Kalki, both videos from the director. They helped so much. And yeah. they talked about the influences of what he talked about foreign cinema for us. It would be Marvel and Disney, all this. He talked about Star Wars and, and Marvel's influence on what his movie was going to be mixed with the historical context of what they believe. And and so that combination was uh, it was I didn't expect anything like what we got, but that right. combination ended up being the perfect combination. And it made something that feels like. You mentioned it to be a singular experience. I mean, this really is its own thing, its own idea, even with the clear influences and the and, and we'll talk about the movies that we saw while watching this movie. But because it has that context of this is an alternate version of that future and mixed with the beliefs and, and uh, the religious aspect of it, man. It's really cool what they did here. And I think we have to give the writers credit mixing all of those things together because you feel the influence, but feeling the influence and then making something feel way too familiar and predictable is one thing. This wasn't that. I didn't find it to be overly familiar to where it yeah. took away. I found it to be familiar in a cool way uh, to make it its own thing. And so I really enjoyed that. And I love just the combination of different ideas, but you're absolutely right. It is this odd 
sci-fi spin on a historical uh, type of, of of history there. So that's that's really cool. And I think this was a natural entry point for us. I mean, as two guys that are, I think, more curious about Indian cinema. I mean, look, the movies that we keep comparing this to, I, I think even the trailer, we were comparing it to Dune. We were comparing it to Mad Max. Mad Max Definitely yeah. after seeing the movie, we see those comparisons. But for me personally, I have seen two other films with Pravas, the main actor in this film and the a big mm-hmm. movie star, as I've come to understand, and uh, Bahubali. So I don't mm-hmm. think you've seen Bahubali part one and two, correct? No, no, okay. I have not. So basically also massive epics, massive epics that are about like warrior clans and giant palaces and things that it's not, mm-hmm. it's not science fiction. It's not futuristic. It is, there's definitely a messianic figure played by Pravas mm-hmm. as Bahubali. And I was honestly a little hesitant to see him play that again, but we'll talk a little bit about that. But I was already familiar with so many things that go into this movie. So I think it was um, welcoming. And I think, you know, if I could answer my own question, I was just about to ask you, but why did we see this? I, I, I think that's a little bit of it, though. Is it like, yeah, I know the movie star. It looks like movies that I'm already familiar with while also being a part of the biggest movie of the year. I mean, it just seemed like a natural step into this culture and world and industry. Yeah, I really got a scope of I watched uh, Salar parts one and two, and I I really got an idea of who Prabhas was. And I mean, the, the movie star quality, you know, people will say this guy's a movie star, that guy's a movie star. This guy's a movie star. I mean, yes. you just, you feel it. And especially the, the context of this film, the moment he shows up, the movie got better the second his character showed up. And yeah. I found him to be the most compelling force in the film. And so I was really excited just from seeing Salar, uh, how different that character would be compared to what you were describing from that movie. I haven't seen either one uh, to this. And the fact that he's not playing the same character, even though it's the same type of character and bringing a different spin on it every time is again, the definition of, of what a movie star is. And so uh, not to say that he carried this film on his shoulders, but he was absolutely my favorite character in the movie uh, and being the most, you know, there's a, there's there are multiple tonal changes in this film throughout, up and down, back and forth. You get these epic and intense moments that are really keep you on the edge of your seat, and then you get these moments where you're sitting in your seat, you're cracking up because it's like, did they really just do that with him? Right. He is a part of those, right? But he owns them, and he kind of uplifts you, especially in the moments where you need it most, because this movie gets dark and it gets dreary at points. Uh, so he really brought that to the table. And I, I found him to be just spectacular in this film. Yeah. I think movie stars, the term that I want to use too, because I think, I, I think we make distinctions between like movie star and actor. So it's like, yeah, I would put him in that sure. category. He's a movie star. Mm-hmm. He's a charismatic mm-hmm. preference presence. Excuse me. He's magnetic. That's the kind of guy he is. And I appreciate him. I'm very excited to sit down and watch Salar eventually, by the way. And you should watch yeah. Bahubali as soon as you can because it rules. But um, awesome. But yeah, so I, I agree. I, I think this might be the best ensemble of all of the Indian movies I've seen, though. Mm-hmm. So we're mm-hmm. talking RRR, Bahubali, Pathan. And Manjamel Boys, I think this is the best as far as the most well-rounded cast of characters for me personally. Nice. But not to spoil it, but it still might be on the lower end of the five that I've named. So there's just a little tease mm. for what I think. But so the Kali Yuga uh, is the age that we're in. And in every age, there's an avatar of Vishnu, the god that I mentioned in and IMDb, this person who's supposed to come and, uh, again, a messianic figure. He's supposed to take care of business and save the day. And so that's what a lot of this premise relies on is the next coming of this character. But 
we are introduced to all these settings and things. So it's a it's an apocalypse, right? So mm -hmm. there's a wasteland. We have this area called Kashi, which is where they're all impoverished. The river Ganja has dried up. So things aren't looking too hot. They are over overruled by the elite that all live in what's called the complex. So guys, picture Elysium. I, you and I naturally went to Elysium, <laughs> and we kind of mentioned that. So yeah. Neil Blomkamp's Elysium, how they build. Uh, it's a ring, I believe, right? It's been a while since I've seen it. But um, yeah. where all the resources are and all the elite live, and they have healthcare up there. and you know, So all the poor... <laughs> Uh, people are on earth with uh, Matt Damon. So it's it's a lot like that. Uh, but there's also a rebel faction that is hiding mm -hmm. out in uh, what I call Wakanda Asia. We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> uh, the the Asian branch of Wakanda, but uh, which is also a really cool aspect of the story as well. So anyway, those are sort of like the factions, the settings. And so I, I think we'll naturally talk more about the characters and everything as well, but just so everybody understands what kind of movie it is, but it's a, it's a sprawling adventure. And as we've kind of alluded to, there's all kinds of tones and genres and it's, it's just a, a really interesting mashup of movies. And, you know, it didn't bother me at all to the, actually I kind of want to relate this to visual effects too. Not that I want to open up to visual effects, but here's mm. sort of this overall idea that I have. It might not do something. It might not do something particularly better than the movies that we're comparing it to, but it still feels new and different because of the overall package and because tonally it's wildly different. I mean, how would you explain your experience with this um, compared to, I don't know, the rest of your cinematic experiences? <laughs> well, I can, uh, you know, I can individually call out some things that I thought fell flat in this film. I mean, the opening sequence fell when we flat? get that, that, but yes, when we get okay. that backstory, just in terms of visual effects, uh, when we get that backstory, our oh, young yeah. version of our guy was atrocious. The visual effects were atrocious yeah. because for some reason. Now, do you know why, Ryan, they decided to fully CGI his face? Is there a reason why they did that? Um, I can't think of a good reason because. Yeah. Because. Just have another actor. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, the the intent is to obviously just draw on a younger version of the older actor. So it opens up guys with this, with this flashback of some warriors fighting it out on the battlefield. And we meet one of those characters ages later. Um, so I don't, I, I don't know why they had to de-age him though. I mean, all it takes just do like a Jon Snow shot where you, yes. you're slowly painting in on the young version and then cut to what the old guy looks like. And it's like, th there's not a good reason for it. Uh, I yeah. was going to kind of add to that, though, that for whatever reason, in my head it clicked, that is bad. But I didn't get upset about it. Okay. And I, I, th I don't know why that is. There are times when the visual effects are, like, and I'm not, I don't even necessarily mean bad. There are times when visual effects are not as good as some of the best visual effects that we've gotten, but I care less. And I mm. don't know. First of all, I don't know if you agree with me, but maybe you can help me figure this out. But there's just something about that. Whatever the I image we get just seems to look better. Mm. Um, so I don't know if it's because of the relationship between the artificial and the natural and it just it blends together naturally they i don't know what techniques they may or may not use but the image as a whole looks better and more coherent even though um the visual effects might not be as great as you know planet of the apes i don't know it's just how i felt and uh i think that that's kind of what i was relating to the tone as well it's like the tonal shifts in this movie I don't know that I would give them a pass in an American movie, but for there's something about how these movies operate 
to where I don't mind them. I, so I kind of had visual effects and tone uh, mm-hmm. in that same basket. Yeah, I uh, I'm with you on tone for sure. You know, tonally it is. I, I guess some would watch this and say it's all over the place, but it feels intentionally all over the place. And again, when you get deep into those dark and dreary moments, you you often need something to kind of pull you out of that and remind you why you're enjoying this experience in the first place. That's that's what I chalk this up to. I, I think they did a really nice job of getting dark when they needed to, uh, especially with her story. And we'll talk about her story and how, I mean, just the the miracle uh, uh, religious you know, side of the story that she was on. Uh, so that gets dark and dreary. But then they always manage to pull you out of that with a little bit of humor or some quirky characters or some uh, interesting one-liners. So I enjoy that in a movie like this. It's something yeah. that doesn't always work, but a movie like this really works. The VFX were a little different for me. Now, I could I could definitely see the side of, well, the scene where we get the really poorly done CGI person is a historical backstory. And so you're. it's almost like in Justice League when Snyder cuts to, and I'm talking Snyder's version, when he cuts to the big battle with Darkseid, uh, when you know, you're going back all of those years. And it's a really CGI-heavy scene, but it was really yeah. cool the way it was done because it was almost stylistic in that way. This was so different compared to the rest of the film style-wise. And so it was a little more okay that it was a full CGI face and DH, but again, the decision to do that really frustrated me because you could have just got another actor. It's, unnec- um, it's unnecessary. Other than it's very unnecessary. And other than that one major CGI mishap and then one shot of a, I think it was a big tiger uh, later on in the movie that just looked terrible. Uh, I think the visual style of this film is astounding. It's genuinely astounding. And when I, I saw agree. the trailer, I compared it to a Zack Snyder movie. They even often use slow-mo in this film. But the it's not just the Zack Snyder effect. It's the world and the atmosphere that we're dealing with. And I thought he did a wonderful job of building up that atmosphere in the beginning, even though that historical scene's a little different from what we get following that, and then distinguishing the different locations that we go to, right? So you got yeah. Kashi, you got the complex and Shambhala. All three feel drastically different from each other, but they all still feel like they belong in the same world. And that's really cool. And so, you know, it almost had that feeling as a three hour movie of you're watching a limited series. You're going to all these locations. You're learning about all these different cultures and the way people interact. And then at the end, it really starts to culminate together and it does it beautifully. And so the visual style was it was a massive part of that. And I thought they just they absolutely nailed it from start to finish. What was your favorite location to be in? Just out of curiosity. I Probably the complex. I mean, Shibala was cool. Don't get me wrong, but probably the complex when, because, you know, and I guess we can go ahead and, and talk about this uh, by Rava and we won't, we won't get into full spoilers here, but he's really, really wanting to go to the complex. And at a point in the movie, he gets to go to the complex. And when they actually get, it almost feels like a fever dream the way that they're portraying yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Uh, but when he, he actually starts to you know explore that and they go on this adventure and they're hiding from the security camera and all that, I, I found it to just be a really excellent location, a really cool place to f- find our characters, especially him feeling so out of place from everyone else. Yeah. And uh, and I thought the the visuals for this, again, you make that Elysium comparison, the big wheel in the sky, the visuals were just outstanding, man. It felt, it almost gave me like Lord of the Rings vibes when we would get these huge statues and these big, you know, like the, the big... <laughs> Did you did you feel the same way? I was literally about to make a Lord of the Rings comparison, but yes! I was I was gonna Let's make go. it to I was gonna make it to Shambhala, but uh, okay, okay. So so the character you're speaking to, by the way, by Rava, that's Pravis's character. He's a bounty he's a bounty hunter that collects mm-hmm. bounties in Kashi, and he dreams of accruing enough money or units to go to the complex. So he has an opportunity to go. It's not a spoiler. Really. It happens early on, but it's also just how the movie naturally takes us through the complex. So, sure. but, um, Shambhala is probably my favorite personally, because yeah. I'm just like, we never see shit like this in American movies. Like it's all, no. it's always just like, 
whenever we go to another world, it's like an indoor set or you go outside and you can tell you're on earth. It's like, yeah, <laughs> they're in Jordan or yeah, they're, you know, it's like it, not that that's necessarily bad, but to actually like have like a design of an entire civilization, essentially. I mean, yes, that reminded me of like Lord of the Rings uh-huh. and, and I loved it, but also just to speak to how fleshed out these worlds are, you know, we obviously start off in Kashi, everything's dried up. It's, it's a sand place. It's Dune. It's mm-hmm. Mad Max. When we get to, and I'm not kidding about this. Like, it sounds like I'm being silly, but there's a moment in the complex where uh, Bairava and Roxy are on a beach. And the way that it's filmed, mm-hmm. I felt like it was the first time I had ever seen water. <laughs> like, it, it, like, moved me. I couldn't believe yeah. it. And even, like, a few shots before that, and you can see this in the trailer. I was waiting to see how it factored into the story. But there's a big, wide shot, establishing shot of them riding horses through uh, this tree line on this big, yes. lush, green hill. And even seeing that, I mean, it's like what Ray probably felt like in Force Awakens. But but, uh-huh. but I am in Kentucky, <laughs> and I've only been in the desert for 45 minutes in a movie theater. But I don't know. There was something about it. I was like, I cannot believe how affecting that was. So I think, again, you, you were just talking about how great the complex felt being there. I mean, yeah, I, I, I felt how dire – the situation is and i i felt like that character in that moment i thought that was really cool i also thought they did a just talking about Provis's character and and you kind of have they spent a lot of the movie making me think he was and and i don't want to dive into spoilers they spent a lot of the movie making me think he was like the hero and the guy right. that we're rooting for and then that's not necessarily the way it goes yeah you don't often see that because i felt so conflicted during the final act of the movie like who am i rooting (laughs) for here genuinely who am i rooting for because you know his desire to get to the complex is so riveting and like you said when he's on the beach you can feel what he feels and i felt complete in that moment watching his character feel complete and so when we're almost required to kind of pick a side at the end and both have good reason for you to pick a side. Uh, that was one of the most compelling parts of the movie for me and something I did not expect at all. Ryan, how about you? You're dancing around spoilers. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what I will say, and I don't know if it's because I'm an idiot, but I went into the movie thinking that he was the Messiah character. Like I, I, I did too. The movie and again, this isn't a spoiler, but the movie is about figuring out who the mother is. And I thought, mm-hmm. just based on the trailers and because Prabhas, I thought that, excuse me, we were going to find out that he was all along. I didn't even consider this whole mother aspect and that we were building up to this story. I thought we were going to dive right into it. And he's just a bounty hunter that's working. <laughs> I mean, he's like a Han Solo. I mean, he's... He's yeah. he's just a dude boots on the ground. He's trying to work and make money and he's a bit of a scoundrel and he's after the chicks and he just wants to make it to the complex. And I'm glad again, because I was kind of worried, like I've already seen Prabhas play this messianic warrior figure. Um, yes. Do I want to see him be a movie star? Yes. But I'm I'm grateful and thankful that there was that dynamic in this movie. Well, it's the it's the Harrison Ford effect. I mean, you made the perfect comparison there, right? He comes and there's even a legend about him too. He's never lost a fight, and that's the legend going in. And so the second you hear that, and then you see what he's doing, the moment and that music kicks in, and you're like, "Oh my god, I'm going to love this character." I'm going to throws a little humor in there, like, "Oh, it's just perfection across the board." That introduction. He's got a sidekick. He's got his Chewy. It's a robot named <laughs> Yeah, he does. Bougie. He's got Uh his Millennium Falcon and that car that they designed for the movie. So, (laughs) yeah. And he's a a bit of a sleaze, but um, charming. And you love him. And you can't help but not look at him. So, one of the things that struck me, tone-wise, 
is we would go from his scenes, which were light and fluffy and feathery and action packed. I do think that some of the hand to hand combat, I thought it was a little clumsy. I'm not going to lie. Um, jarring. I, yeah. Like in the first act specifically, the second act, mm-hmm. all of the sequencing, I thought crushed it. And it was run and gun in the second act. And by second act, I mean, uh, sorry, the second part after the intermission. Not technically the second mm-hmm. act necessarily. Sorry. But um, but they were they were still fun. I was still enjoying those fight scenes. But um, you'd go from that to being in the complex where we meet Samadhi or Sumati. And uh, mm-hmm. that was like its own trippy thing. I mean, there was definitely like Harkonnen vibes as well. But it was also sure. straight like science fiction uh, matrix type stuff too. And so it would be like deadly serious uh, muted sci-fi back to back with those like fluffy scenes with him. And I think that's what we were primarily alluding to, but somehow they pulled it off. And then those two characters and worlds end up meeting later on. And then that works too. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, our big bad villain felt like uh, the Baron mixed with the Emperor mixed with Jared Leto's character in Blade Runner 2049. Because you even have those things <laughs> flying around him. I was, like Jared I was thinking character. Snoke because he has that giant gash oh, coming yeah. down his head. I thought he was like You're Snoke because right. they also called him uh, Supreme. So I was thinking Snoke and mm-hmm. Baron Harkin. Literally just a combination of, well, that's the thing though, right? You say that. If you've never watched the movie, you're going to be like, oh, so they're just stealing from all these other sci-fi movies. And yeah, sort of. But it's such it, it's such a distinct version of this combination of all these things we've seen before. But he's his own thing, and he's a presence. Yeah. He's a force. And the movie goes from, ha ha, oh, he's, he's a funny character. Ha ha, this is a light moment. When we go to him, and we go to what's happening to all these women, because there's a brutal scene in this movie mm. that I didn't expect what's happening to the women. And I was like, oh, my God. I mean, yeah. it, they there's you know, I got uh, at, at one point I got like a Toy Story three vibe. If You've seen the movie, you know, what I'm talking about <laughs> from one of the scenes. <laughs> and so I'm like, dang, man, they're doing this. But then you go back to the lighthearted. And, but it was just balanced. It's hard to say. And you believe me, if you've not seen the movie, that it fit. But tonally. I didn't have much of an issue going back and forth. There's something about it. Like, I I think it just comes to this understanding where like, I already feel like anything is possible. (laughs) Um, When I watch Indian movies, like the, the word you and I use is bombast. And I don't know if there's like a language barrier, but what I mean when I say that is, stylistically it's like inflated or an exaggerated and you know brando and i used to talk a lot about this when we uh reviewed the few movies that i spoke to earlier i mean these are also just like live action animes so it's like For you sure. can you can have these really interesting ideas and conversations between certain characters and then they fly around and punch each other and so mm-hmm. there's just something about this like a learned idea even though this is what the fifth or sixth now Indian movie that I've ever seen. And, uh, but there's just something about it that I, I don't know. My mind thinks differently about this. You know, it's like when I watched Manjumel boys, I talked a little bit about, and I think there's some of this with this movie too. Uh, even though they come from different in- industries, still both South Indian. But uh, I think the first half just kind of takes its time takes a little too long. Like I I think for sure I talked a lot about like what would Manjamel boys have been if it was made in America. I, I thought that was an interesting conversation mm. to have. So I talked a little bit yeah. about, I talked about how America would make it different, but um, I think making the first act more succinct in both movies would definitely help it. But you know, a, a commenter, and forgive me, I don't remember the name, but somebody was like, yeah, this is just how all of the movies are for the most part. And we understand it to that's we understand it to, you know, be that that's actually why the movie pays itself off. And, you know, mm-hmm. Majumel Boys and also this, I mean, they 
they run and gun at the end and then you're yeah. feeling all kinds of things. So I'm just like, yeah, you know what? Maybe that's just something I've come to understand that when I sit down, I'm chilling out for an hour and a half or so. And then we're going to go boom, 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 boom. Obviously not every movie is going to be like this, but I don't know. There's something to this idea that like, I already expect that. And I know that when I sit down for a movie like this, but when I go see horizon and American saga sometime in the next week, there's no way I'm good. I mean, I might, I might, but I'm probably less likely to give it the benefit of the doubt. It's like your brain has to click and adjust when watching a film like this, especially this one with uh, on the scale that it is being maybe the biggest blockbuster we're going to see this summer. I mean, gen I genuinely believe that it's one of the biggest movies I've seen uh, in the last 365 days. But yeah. so your brain has to adjust to seeing that and understanding it's going to be a lot different tonally from American movies and understanding there is this anime flair to everything feeling slightly exaggerated. And I mentioned, you know, the, from the one liners, to the way the characters talk to each other, to the way the music kicks in, to the way the camera moves around our character in swift ways that we just don't often see in American films and uh, the use of slow. Slow-mo, it's not constant and consistent slow-mo. I noticed that in this movie. It's not slow-mo like we see it here. It's they would move the camera and then they'd slow it down for a second and then they'd move it and go back regular speed. And I'm like, that's not that's something I rarely see in American movies. And right. I like that. It's different. It brings a different feel to a story. It brings us closer. It really does bring us closer to these characters. And so you're almost getting more intimate with something that may seem to some way more exaggerated than something we would see in an American movie. But it's just the way they film it and go about it. And so once your brain clicks and adjusts to that, uh, like it did for me a couple of years ago, I mean, I, I, I want to say RRR was the first time I ever got engrossed uh, in Indian cinema. And the moment my brain clicked, I was in. Yeah. And I think I've been in ever since. And not all of them work, obviously, but when they work like a like a Kalki, I, I think it uh, it works really well. Yeah, something else I've noticed, mostly when they go slow mo, they don't increase the frame rate, so it like stays yes. the same. So it, then it actually looks yes. chopped up. It's almost like like mm -hmm. that's like a um, Saving Private Ryan type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Instead of you know increasing it to sixty FPS or whatever, that's like beach of normandy kind of thing where the frame rate's actually lower um mm -hmm. i i did notice a few unfinished shots um when we finally see the complex there's this wide shot um i saw like in the top right corner there's like there were like noisy glitches like i could actually tell oh, okay. that there was an issue and then there's a portion where we're inside a cave with mother and uh ashwatthama at the end and you can so you can see the light coming into the cave but there was actually like this glitchy noise so i did see a few unfinished mm. shots actually uh which okay. which made me sad but that's okay not a big deal doesn't even sound sure. like you noticed so it's all good yeah yeah those are things i i Oftentimes I'll notice those on second or third watches, but I, I, I genuinely didn't, other than the CGI that just didn't work for me, I didn't notice mm -hmm. any of the unfinished stuff. So I'll have to, I'll have to pay more attention when I inevitably see this again, because I think I will. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit more about. There were, I, I think in general, I enjoyed watching every character, um, even the characters that didn't last very long. So we met. Um, some of the refugees that were mm -hmm. pretending to be um, – what word do I want? They just pick up scraps. Uh, junkers. Uh, so we okay. met a band of uh, junkers, quote-unquote, and there was this young girl that made an impression on me because she was just a pretty unique character. But she was just very charming and very funny and um, – a nice, like calming, youthful presence. And then she would go yes. into kicking ass. And, yeah. you know, whenever you'd see a lot of the bad guys, of course, there wasn't that dynamic where like they had any other personality other than like tough, bad guy. So I just <laughs> thought that was kind of interesting. I also got a little bit worried. I'm not going to spoil this, but I got a little bit 
worried going into the second half of the movie because I felt like the perspective and point of view of Sumati was just like completely eliminated from the movie. Mm. But I don't know that we entirely did that, but um, it got a little close and I was like, ah, well, that's a little disappointing. But um, I don't think it like devastated the movie by any means. Yeah, the uh, the young girl that you brought up, she's actually a very integral character, too, because she makes a big impact on, when they're all mm-hmm. together in the back of the truck and she's talking about what marriage is and what a relationship is and uh that dynamic that she has with uh i can't remember his name but uh it, it's a really riveting thing and she made like you said a huge uh kind of more brief than i would have wanted impact on me as a character and she brought some humor i think that's you know one thing a lot of these side characters incorporate some some nice humor and i was worried at the beginning with our two turned into one young character that we were following that they were just going to disappear altogether but they they kind of come back at the end and 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 it brings a nice little sense of humor as well so uh yeah there there are those characters that i would have liked to have seen more but for the most part you know they work even in short bursts if you will well yeah other than the de-aged version of it we haven't talked a lot about that character uh ashwatthama it's by the way i got i I remember reading one of the comments it's either that gentleman or the gentleman who plays Supreme. It's actually like a super well-known actor in India that's like apparently like way more made up than they're used to seeing. So people were excited. I'm gonna assume it's Supreme because he had such okay. um he had such a cosmetic change in his appearance, but uh I can't remember which one they were talking about. So apparently it was like nice to see um for Indian audiences a particular actor in that role. But this character he was like the Gandalf, if you will. But <laughs> whenever he was on screen, I it, even like when he wasn't the focus, like even when he was in the background or like just his hand holding his staff would be in frame. I stared at him because for whatever reason, I was always drawn to how they were pulling this off. Um whether it be force perspective or CGI or whatever it was like, I always, I I just kept looking at him trying to find a flaw in that design. And in that, but Mm -hmm. I just thought it worked so well. I, I, I in general thought he was a cool character and he had a lot of badass moments and stuff, but I was trying to see the seams as well. And I never did. And I thought they crushed a lot of those smaller visual effects as well. Ashwatthama is one of the coolest characters I've seen this year. Just so freaking (laughs) cool, man. Uh, Awesome, dude. The voice, you know, the way that it radiated, I don't know if this will be replicated if you watch this at home, but the voice, the way that that voice carried through the theater, Yeah. every time I'm like, oh my God, like that's just a force of nature and the height and the broadness i'm like this is this is everything you want the actor has been in movies like slumdog millionaire and great gatsby as well as Mm -hmm. uh countless movies from india so uh obviously really good but oh my goodness now again the de-aging thing didn't necessarily need it with the flashbacks but when we get his especially his battles at the end with Pravas, i'm like yeah i could watch i could have watched that for two more hours it was incredible it was awesome 